Hey, a good Friday morning to you. It is September the 23rd here. We're tracking a very active tropical basin across the entire Atlantic Basin, but all eyes are really on here in the United States. Tropical Depression 9. This is your 10 a.m. update uh, on your Friday morning, and we still don't have a named storm just yet. It's still not completely uh, meeting the classifications. It doesn't have winds of 40 miles an hour, therefore it's not a tropical storm, but that will likely change maybe later today and into the weekend as conditions become more favorable. Let's start right off the back. Let's start with the 10 a.m. track because this is the latest track update. Notice it continues to move west here through tomorrow, but by Sunday, that's when we have it starting to make that northwesterly turn could bring impacts to Jamaica by Sunday and notice continuing to strengthen. It'll near the Cayman Islands by, we'll say, Sunday night, and then there it is moving towards the western side of Cuba, continuing to grow in intensity. That would be by Monday night, and then by Monday night to Tuesday, it's in the Gulf of Mexico, probably starting to feel some effects into South Florida and then making landfall still somewhere in Florida by Wednesday morning or late Tuesday night, Wednesday morning. Now the National Hurricane Center has bumped up the intensity some, but this was to be expected, could be making landfall as a major hurricane in Florida. And remember, we always say prepare for one category higher. So you should be preparing for a major landfall strike in the state of Florida. And this includes really the entire peninsula. I know the center of the cone and I don't like drawing the center line on here because people fixate on it, but the storm could make landfall anywhere from South Florida to the Keys to the Florida Straits to Fort Myers to Tampa to even a north of Tampa. Even the Big Bend area could still see a landfall from this system. There's a lot of uncertainty on exactly where TD9, eventually a hurricane, is going to be moving into. So that's the latest track as of 10 a.m. No big changes though with it. It's just explicitly stating a Cat 3 now. But overall, we didn't see any major changes. And there's likely going to be some fluctuations, but nothing major there. All right, so why don't we have a tropical storm? Well, this thing is still fighting wind shear. This morning, we have wind shear out of the northeast. And this is actually still associated with somewhat out flow from Fiona, which is still a powerful hurricane to the north. That shear is pushing down into on the easterly side of this, so it's displacing all the showers and storms away from the center. Now, fortunately, we've had hurricane hunters going in here. That helps our data, that helps our models, and it also paints and lets us know what are the actual winds in this doing. So when you look at this, it's got a, it's we call it a naked circulation because, well, you can see the surface slow spinning and there's nothing near it. Whereas on the western side of that circulation over here, that's where all the storms have been displaced because we've still got the impressive north easterly shear pushing on it. So until that shear relaxes, which probably ain't going to happen until tomorrow into Sunday, this thing is not going to rapidly intensify, we don't think. But Sunday, though, that shear is going to be relaxed enough that if this takes advantage of the environment it's in, it could definitely rapidly grow into a, not only a storm, but a hurricane as it approaches the Jamaica and Cayman Islands. That would be on about Sunday or so. So that's the problems that Tropical Depression 9 has right now. Still has shear. This is all going as forecasted, though. So it's moving west right now. It's going to eventually start to turn north. Why is it going to make that turn? Well, there's a couple different features we're watching. This is as of right now and through at least Saturday. You've got a big ridge north of it. As long as that's sitting north of it, this thing's heading west, and that's going to continue. Now, by Sunday, that's when it starts to start to pull to the north. One of the factors that's going to start to pull it is an upper level low, and it's not very big. You almost have to really look to find it, but it's an upper level low spinning right in there near the Yucatan and Cuba area. That upper level low you remember the winds spin counterclockwise, so that will start to tug into that upper level low if the storm is strong enough to feel that tug. So as the storm intensifies, it's going to feel more of a tug from the upper levels. So that upper level low is going to start to pull it to the north. And then as we get into, let me back this up here, as we get it into the Monday to Tuesday time frame, and it starts to lift more from northwest to north, that's thanks to our big trough of low pressure coming down over the east coast. So that's why this thing looks more and more likely like it's going to stay in the eastern Gulf of Mexico or towards Florida. A central and western Gulf of Mexico scenario is looking less and less likely, especially, especially a western Gulf of Mexico, but a central even look less and less and less likely, and it's thanks to that trough coming down. Now, 
Is there a way for it to be more westerly than easterly? Yes, and it all just depends on, well, how quickly it starts to turn to the north. If the system turns closer to Cuba a little faster, it'll probably go more to South Florida. If it stays maybe on the western tip or towards the Yucatan Channel, that means it has a better chance of going maybe further up the coastline of western uh, coastline of Florida and maybe closer to the Big Bend. So when you look at our tropical models of Tropical Depression 9, they've really come into agreement over the next several days. This thing's going to head west through Saturday. Notice on Sunday, they start to all make that turn. They don't agree exactly when that turn will happen. Some swing it out a little bit further, others tighter with it, but they generally start to turn it. So we're confident in that. Here's what we got a little bit of a tricky forecast in. It's, does it go over central Cuba or more like western or the Yucatan, Cuba or the Yucatan Channel? That's going to be important because if you have a storm that travels closer to the Yucatan Channel, it'll probably be a little bit slower to move to the north here and may get closer up towards closer to the panhandle of Florida, the Big Bend and towards Tampa. Now, if it comes a little bit quicker and moves and starts to turn quicker towards Cuba, that could place it towards maybe South Florida, Miami. So remember, the cone of uncertainty exists to show that that center of the storm could track anywhere within there and sometimes it tracks outside of the cone so from really the panhandle all the way down to the keys to the florida straits the bahamas you could have a landfalling pretty strong system as we go into the tuesday wednesday time frame now the center of it is right around tampa fort myers somewhere in there but it's not a slam dunk forecast by any means and remember we still have somewhat of an unorganized system with an exposed low level circulation this thing could redevelop a center of circulation underneath where those storms are and that may jump around a bit and maybe fluctuate the models as well but uh, generally an east gulf of mexico storm seems like the most likely scenario our two global models are the gfs the american model and the green there is the european model showing something similar through at least saturday they both show a similar strength storm as we go through the weekend but then this is where they diverge right you've still got the gfs trending a little bit further to the east or west you've got the euro trending further to the east and watch what happens the euro moves closer to central cuba and lifts up towards south florida miami the keys whereas the gfs comes in a little bit further off towards the west and brings it up towards fort myers and tampa so overall the scenarios are still there for maybe a little bit further to the north or south so really the entire state of florida you just got to be watching and doing what you need to to get ready make sure you have the hurricane plan things like that know what you should do if you are asked to evacuate these are things you could do now now, a lot of people ask, well, is there any way this could perhaps track more so into the central Gulf of Mexico? It's not likely uh, with that trough coming down. But if you look at your GFS ensemble models, and these are still spaghetti plots, but this is just one specific model. Instead of using a variation of models, this is the GFS only. But we've taken the conditions of the storm and changed it around some. So you get all these different scenarios. And... What you're looking at here, these western solutions that track a little bit further off into the Gulf, these are ones that stay a bit further south and they don't feel the tug of that trough as quickly. So they're a little bit slower and they're able to get further into the Gulf and perhaps lift up towards the Panhandle. Could this still happen? It could, depending on what the storm does in the next couple of days, but it seems like it's more likely going to be this more central scenario where it's towards the tip of Cuba and lifting up towards the uh, central portions of the western coast of Florida, which puts the entire South South Florida under the gun for a potentially major hurricane. So that's what we're looking at with the track. That's what we're looking at with the steering currents. The next big question is, well, what's the strength of this thing going to be? And it's pretty tricky to forecast this. The intensity is the hardest thing to forecast when you're talking about a developing system. And it's one of the things that models struggle with the most and meteorologists as well. One thing's for certain, and this is always the case in the Gulf of Mexico and Caribbean this time of year, the waters are hot. That is a given. We've got upper 80s uh, and uh, mid 80s in a lot of these locations. Some locations even approach it near 90. You've also got deep sea surface temperatures. We call this the ocean, ocean, ocean heat content. So there's plenty of that all the way through the Caribbean, plenty of fuel for this thing, plenty of fuel up into Florida, plenty of fuel all the way into the northern Gulf. So water temperatures are not um, a limiting factor here, right? Now, there are some limiting factors, perhaps. And in the near term, it's wind shear. Right now, it's wind shear. And you can see it very clearly on our models. The center of... TD9's right in there. We've still got a strong northeasterly wind. 
So that's why it's not becoming a tropical storm very rapidly this morning. As we go out in time, though, as we get into Saturday, Sunday, do you notice what happens? Do you see any of those wind barbs anywhere? No, because wind shear is going to start to relax as we head into the Sunday, Monday time frame. And this is when we think we could see the biggest growth of the storm. Maybe it rapidly intensifies as it nears the Cayman Islands and nears Cuba. That's through Monday. Now, as we get into Tuesday and Wednesday, as it approaches Florida, the wind shear is going to start to change. We're going to actually see an increasing in wind shear and an increasing of dry air in the western Gulf of Mexico. Why is this? It's because of our cool front and our trough of low pressure. So while it is pushing it towards Florida, the wind shear is going to be increasing and you can really see that. So I do think we're still probably going to have a strong hurricane approaching the coast of Florida, but as it gets closer and closer to Florida, look what happens. That wind shear is howling out of the west and southwest here. That's that big trough of low pressure digging down. That's why it's moving from north to northeast to east. Also, look at all of this dry air in the Gulf of Mexico. This is thanks to that cool front and that dry air coming in from the continental U.S. That is going to create a lot of dry air in the Gulf of Mexico. And if the storm is um, robust enough, it can fight off that dry air. But eventually, I do think some of that dry air is going to get tugged up into it, especially on the south side here, and maybe start to weaken it as it makes landfall. That coupled with it making landfall. So overall, the limiting factors are wind shear towards the landfalling component of it making landfall in Florida, but it may not get there in time to really affect a robust major hurricane. So um, that will be something to watch. There is going to be some wind shear, there is going to be some dry air, but not sure it's going to have a great enough effect to really knock it down before it makes landfall, probably on the west coast of Florida there. So that's what we're looking at with the track, where it stands right now. What we're going to be watching with wind shear, dry air, of course the water temperatures are hot. This does have a chance to really blow up into a major storm for portions of Florida. Now, what's the name going to be? Everyone keeps saying this is going to be Hermine. It might not be. Reason for that? Take a look at this. We've got Fiona, major Cat 4 heading towards uh, the Nova Scotia area tonight. It's been battering Bermuda all night long. Gaston's got a name. So the next two names, Hermine and uh, Ian, I'm sorry, Hermine and Ian, there's going to be a race. We have a new tropical depression that's formed out over the continent of just off the continent of Africa. These two will be making a race. And I will say tropical depression 10 looks a little bit better organized than tropical depression nine in the Caribbean. So 10 may end up becoming Hermine and nine may end up becoming Ian. We will have to wait and see. And these are things that, you know, really don't matter. But uh, it's hard to say that this is going to be Hermine when tropical depression 10 could actually take that name first. But either way, Hermine, Ian are the next two names you're probably going to be hearing. And just by the way, after Ian is Julia. So that's where we stand. It is 10 a.m. here on in Central Time, 11 a.m. Eastern Time Zone here for an update on Tropical Depression 9 heading towards the Caribbean. It's moving through it. We're expecting this to intensify. Could be making landfall in the Florida area by Tuesday into Wednesday as a major hurricane. Of course, we're going to have many more updates over the next coming days, but that's where we stand as of this morning. Hope everyone has a wonderful Friday and a safe weekend.